Hey viewers, the Colonel speaking to you live from the Price Secretary for British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting. And as you see, a complete machine. It was complete before. But um, I had a call from a chap who um, said, I saw your video and very impressed. He said, but your base is, uh, your pedestal base is, um, got a few problems. He said, I've got a spare expert senior um, um, tabletop case. Would you be interested in borrowing it? I said, well, certainly. Anyway, he said, we'll meet up later in the week and sort it out. I thought, fine. Not very keen on borrowing things from people. Um, it's a tremendous responsibility. I prefer to sort of either not borrow them or sort of buy them outright. Anyway, late yesterday afternoon, he called and said, my wife tells me to get rid of this thing. <laughs> Come and have a look. And if you're interested, buy it from me. I thought, well, that solves both problems, doesn't it, really? Uh, and, but the only problem was getting out of Oxford it's an absolute nightmare at the moment they're doing ra uh, roadworks on several of the big roundabouts and the Milton Interchange down on the A34 is, is being rebuilt and is an absolute nightmare anyway for people who I know who go that way quite frequently say so it's terrible hours of waiting anyway so I disappeared off yesterday afternoon and to collect it I uh, spent a couple of hours in a very pleasant town on the way, um, found a very good bookshop and a very nice tea shop, but I did not find any 78s. And the one sort of vinyl shop I went into, they looked at me very oddly as if they'd never heard of such things. Well, very odd, really. Anyway, I went and had a look. Very nice base this is too. Needed a damn good clean. Um, the chap and I came to a, an arrangement and I came back. That got back on fairly early this morning awning we were listening to records on it without a horn <laughs> see i didn't take the horn down with me which might have been an idea but i was too busy to escape oxford uh, too busy thinking of escaping the uh, the city to actually um think sensibly like that anyway here it is and when i sorted it out this morning i realized the horn didn't fit I'm not sure why. This isn't an expert senior horn. It's a bigger. It's 29 and 3 quarter inches, so I don't know. Anyway, that may affect the casting. Or it may just be these things were handmade. And the casting at the back of the horn and the casting on the back of the case were made as pairs. I don't know. I had a Mark 9 horn years ago and bought a Mark 9 base separately. The base had originally come with a Mark 10B horn from a doctor in Marlow. He'd sold it to a collector um, because he was being pestered by the leading dealer to sell it to him. And he sold it to the collector for less money to get rid of the leading dealer. Those of you who know the leading dealer and know what he's like will know the veracity of this story. Anyway, it wouldn't fit. I put this horn on the base, it wouldn't fit. So I thought, what the hell do I do now? I can't go and have the horn thing machined because it won't fit my pedestal base. And there was the answer. I unscrewed the fittings from the pedestal base and I bolted them onto here. And the internal plumbing from here was the same um, thread as on the back piece because it all screws together. I'm sure, I don't know whether you know, there's a sort of big casting on the back here, it goes in and there's a sort of joint which you screw up. Anyway, that fitted. So the back piece on this is from my pedestal base, which will be with my restorers for some time. So I shall use this base for the moment. And when the pedestal base is done, you know, but I bear in mind that the pedestal base is not much different to this. It just goes down to the floor and some cabriole legs. If you look up, up between the legs, as it were, and up skirt action, all you see is the motor at the top of the case. There's no record cabinet underneath on the pedestal base or anything. It's a complete waste of space, really. Now, one of these is much more useful. At least you can stick it where I've stuck it on a, a coffee table, I've found. Uh, but at least it's level, and that's the point. And here, we, you know, it's a lovely case. Uh, what's it? Um, handmade expert gramophone EM Gin, 10A, Soho Square, Oxford Street, West 1. Came with the sound box. That's the original sound box. I haven't tuned it. I don't know what it's going to sound like. I forgot to... Uh, no, I must have it here. I didn't uh, take the sound box off the pedestal. So it must be... Well, it must be in a box around here somewhere. It's certainly not gone to the restore. Anyway, we'll, we'll try it with several of the uh, four spring sound box I've got. Look what he gave me for free. One of these. That means I've got two of these now. They don't say EM gear on the top. But uh, I'd be very suspicious of those what do. 
<laughs> uh, it may have that written on it soon. <laughs> anyway, let's play a record. Enough of my waffling. Um, if we can get it off there. So it was quite a stressful encounter, but at least I can just got a usable base, which is level, and the other one can be restored, and I can still use this. Which is brilliant. Here we go with his master's voice, DA four nine zero eight. The three waltzes, Le Trois Valls, and Je T'aime Valt song by Oscar Strauss after Johann Strauss Jr. Sung by Yvonne Prontomps. I think that's uh, pronounced. Here we go. The motor, as I say, hasn't been fully serviced, but it's just been oiled, so it's a little bit rumbly. Well, that was magnificent, wasn't it? I almost joined in at the end there. Well, let's quickly uh, grab that. Right, that's it. Uh, well, oh, we've got an opportunity to test the selector speed tester. There we go. Let's just check that. There we are. Wonderful. As you see, when it uh, it's all centrifugal force, works a treat. Made by Meltrope, I think. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, more videos to come. But I'm very pleased with this base. And thanks very much. Oh yes, I forgot to tell you the condition he sold it to me on. <laughs> He's got a complete set of National Gramophonic Society recordings, <laughs> and he wants to hear them on YouTube via this bass with this horn. I've got to play the lot. 
They're very, very quiet, and you can hardly hear them. But with one of these, you may, may be able to hear them. So I shall. I won't do them all at once. There's, I think, three hundred discs. Uh, what have I done with them as well? Oh, they're in the car. That's right. <laughs> I forget. Uh, forget my own head if it wasn't nailed on, viewers. Uh, a bit like Frankenstein. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Lots more to come. Thank you, viewers, and goodbye. <laughs>